Hi, I'm Kath. My channel is Made by Kath Crafts. And in this video, I'm going to be talking all about my 10 favourite fabrics for my handmade wardrobe that I've sewn with to date. And I'm going to share what I made with each of those fabrics. Hi there, I'm Kath. Welcome to my channel Made by Kath Craft. Thank you very much for joining me for my latest video. So for this video, I had a lot of fun having a rummage through my handmade wardrobe and picking out my 10 favourite fabrics I've sewn with to date. As you can imagine, it was quite hard to choose 10 favourites. Um, I know a lot of people who sew describe fabric shopping as a separate hobby from sewing in itself and I can see why because it's definitely a really fun part of the sewing process and I really love picking out fabrics and then finding just the right pattern to pair with them. So I'm really looking forward to sharing my 10 favourite fabrics in this video and talking all about what garments I turned each of those fabrics into. So before I start sharing my 10 favourite fabrics, as usual, I'll kick this video off by sharing what I'm wearing today. And today is quite a warm day here in the south of England and I've got on quite a summery dress. And it's a summer dress I made by hacking this pattern here, which is the Ogden Cami pattern by True Bias. And it's a really nice woven cami top pattern with this deep V and spaghetti straps and quite a sort of simple straight shape. And I really enjoy hacking this pattern. I've done a few different hacks. And the hack I'm wearing today is a tiered maxi dress for summer. So I basically cropped off the cami a little bit higher, just around my natural waist, and I added on three tiers and I turned it into a colour blocked summer maxi dress. So I'll stand up slightly so you can see the colour blocking. As you can see, I used two different colourways of this fabric, which is a lovely tensile lawn fabric that I got last year from First for Fabrics. It's really nice and floaty. And the bodice colourway here and one of the tiers is in a sort of white background with little sort of blue flecks. And I think it almost looks like palm leaves with sunshine or sort of blue sky peeking through. And then the blue colourway is the opposite. So it's got the main blue colour with little sort of white um, bits poking through there. And I really enjoyed this hack and I've actually written a blog post talking all about um, the sizing and adjustments and everything about this hack and I'll include a link down below in case you fancy checking that out. Oh and I'll pop a picture up of me wearing this dress so you can see what it looks like on. I find it really nice and comfy and floaty to wear and I think it's perfect for a warm summer's day. So now I'll move on to sharing my 10 favourite fabrics from my handmade wardrobe that I've sewn with to date and I'm sharing these in no particular order because it was hard enough to narrow it down to my top 10, let alone choose an ultimate favourite out of those. But the first one I'm going to share is one of the older fabrics out of the fabrics that I've picked. And it's this amazing fabric here. Um, it's a really cute cotton poplin fabric by Art Gallery Fabrics. And as you can see, it's got this really amazing ice cream print on. So it's got a navy base and I do love a bit of navy. And then it's got these ice creams and quite a large scale print in lots of pretty summery colours. So there's pinks and yellows and pale blues and there's even some ice creams with sprinkles on, which I think are really cute. So it's just one of those fabrics that totally grabbed me when I saw it and I had to buy some. And I knew I wanted to turn it into a cute dress. So this is the dress I turned it into. And I made this dress using this pattern here, which is the day dress pattern by the Average Seams dress. It's a really nice pattern I've made a couple of times, but I haven't made recently at all, but I'll show you the line drawings for it. It's a basic, quite a simple dress pattern with a gathered skirt and a fitted bodice and then zip, visible zip down the back. And then it has a few different options for front bodice. Either you can make quite a simple um, one piece front bodice or you can make a panelled bodice with two sides or you can add sort of a faux button placket down the front, but you don't really need the buttons because you've got the invisible zip at the back. So it's quite a nice, simple silhouette to it. And I thought that'd be great for showcasing this lovely print. And I went for the plain bodice just so I didn't break the ice creams up at all because I really wanted the ice creams to be the star of the show on this one. So it's got pockets, so it's quite a nice practical dress. Pockets are in here. Um, and then invisible bit zip, you can see there at the back, um, which means you can kind of get into it and get a quite a nice tight fit on this one. And I thought it would be great for a cotton pop link because it would really hold the shape of the bodice. And I think it works really well. And it's one I love to wear. It's just so fun. If I ever wear it, people always comment on the print because it is just such a lovely, fun print. And I actually ended up over-ordering on the fabric for this one. And I had enough to turn it into the leftover fabric into a skirt. So I'll show you my other ice cream print garment. And this is the skirt I made. And it's a really cute gathered skirt with a fitted waist. And for this skirt, I use this pattern here, 
which is one of my favourite skirt patterns, which is the Megan Nielsen Brumby skirt pattern. It's a really nice skirt pattern with a fitted waist and a gathered skirt that's designed to be kind of a mini skirt length. And the, the nice feature about this one is it has an exposed zip at the back, which I'll show you on this skirt. And there are a few different options for this one. And the version I chose for my ice cream fabric, again, to save breaking up the ice creams to really showcase that lovely print, is this simple gathered skirt at the bottom. And I added on inseam pockets just to make it extra practical. So this is my Megan Nielsen Brumby skirt and ice cream print. And you can see the exposed zip on the back, which is a nice feature. And I had a bit of fun with the top stitching on this one. So around the zip and also on the hemline, um, I used hot pink stitching just to add a little bit of an extra fun feature to this skirt. And again, it's got pockets. I think I had to use, yeah, I used some white fabric for the pockets, a kind of white cotton poplin of a similar weight to the skirt. Um, just because I didn't have quite enough fabric to squeeze the pockets out, but I still wanted them. But you can't really see them because they're kind of set in. But again, I used a bit of pink top stitching for the pockets too. And this is actually one of the rare times when I like the second item I made out of the fabric remnants just as much as the first item I made. I often find that I buy a fabric and I have a particular garment in mind I want to make and so if I use the remnant on something else it feels like a bit of a compromise because it isn't the original garment I wanted to make with that fabric. But I do love both these garments and I find I wear them at different times and I enjoy them both a lot. An ice cream print works quite well with quite a lot of different colour tops. I often team it with like a white vest top or I've got another yellow vest top, or it works well with a red too. So it's quite nice because you can pick out all the different colours and ice creams. I really enjoy having a lovely bright and colourful outfit. I think they're both really great for summer. So that's my first favourite print, and I think you can see why. And I think actually this fabric is still in stock at Minerva, so I'll link it down below, and I'll link all the patterns down below, and I'll link the fabrics wherever they are still available. But yeah, it's a really lovely quality cotton poplin in this amazing ice cream print. So the second fabric that's on my favourites list. It's another one of the older fabrics I bought, but this one is one I sewed up actually not too long ago because it sat in my stash for ages because I was really worried about cutting into it and making the wrong choice. I often do buy a fabric with a particular pattern in mind, but with this fabric, I didn't have a particular pattern in mind. I think that was my downfall. It made me really doubt myself. And it was only, I think, early last year where I finally decided what I was gonna make. And I'm really happy with what I eventually chose. And it's another sort of novelty print fabric, but I think it's a really cute one. It's this really pretty chambray fabric with a Parisian style design on it. As you can see it's a classic blue chambray colour as a base but it's got all these really cute little pink hearts on and it's got little Breton striped t-shirts and Eiffel Towers and I think the fabric was called Paris in Love when I bought it and I just loved it. I love a chambray. I find them really nice and soft and comfortable to wear and I just thought this print was really really cute. So yeah this fabric sat in my stash for quite a while inside until I decided to turn it into this dress here which is a shirt dress I made using this pattern here, which is the Fleetwood dress pattern by French Navy. And I really like French Navy patterns because I think they're really wearable designs that often have a nice twist on them. And I'll show you the line drawings of the Fleetwood dress so you can see a few more of the nice details of this pattern. So I went for view A here, which has this lovely panelled bodice on with a yoke and these sort of panellings on the side, which provide a bit of shaping and a button down front. And it's got a long sleeve with a little cuff and it's got this really cute two-tiered gathered skirt with this ruffle on the bottom, which I think is a really nice feature and makes it a bit different to your average shirt dress. And I found the Fleetwood dress pattern came together really nice. I really like the finishing on French navy patterns and I really like the instructions too. So yeah, this is my Fleetwood dress in my Love in Paris chambray. And as you can see, I had fun with the buttons. I went for these pink buttons. So I think one is just <laughs> hiding under there at the moment. Um, just to sort of as a little extra pop of colour into time with the little pink hearts. And it's got the two tiers of the ruffle. It's got the lovely back yoke and it's just a really fun one to wear. I think it's perfect for kind of the in-between weather where it's not really hot, but it's not so cold. And I love pairing it with a pair of trainers and I'll put a picture up of me wearing it so you can see what this one looks like on. But yeah, I was really pleased to finally found, find a pattern that I thought would be a perfect match to this fabric. And I do love wearing my chambray Paris style dress. <laughs> so my next favorite fabric that I've got to share is a floral print fabric. And I do love a floral print fabric and I've got quite a few in my handmade wardrobe so it's quite hard to choose a favourite but in the end I went for this one here and this is a linen viscose mix fabric. I do love a linen viscose mix, I think it's such a nice fabric to wear for summer. And the reason why I chose this fabric as my favourite floral I think is I remember when I saw this fabric originally online and I just thought it looked like a watercolour painting, I thought it was so pretty. You can see it's got lots of different flowers on it and flowers with different details and different colours. 
there are sort of sort of soft reds and orangey yellows and whites and greens and blues and I think it's on a kind of base that's a sort of blue colour but it's quite a dusky soft blue a bit lighter than a navy I'm not sure the camera's picking it up quite well because it's a bit lighter than it's coming across on the camera but I think it really makes all the beautiful colours on this fabric pop so I just thought it was such a beautiful fabric and it's such a nice quality fabric as well this is a Lady McElroy fabric and I had to look online and it's still in stock at Minerva so I'll link it down below. I think it comes in a couple of different colourways. This is obviously the blue base but I think there's a black base version too. But it's such beautiful fabric I wanted to turn it into a summery garment and I ended up turning it into a play suit that I made using this pattern here which is the Zadie jumpsuit pattern by Paper Theory. But I just cropped it off to turn it into a play suit version with the short sleeves and a sort of shorts length. It's a really nice pattern and one that I admired on a lot of other people before I decided to try it myself. It's got this sort of crossover bodice and this lovely visible bias binding detail to finish it around the edge here, which is a really nice finish. And it's got these ties that sort of cinch it in around the waist. So it's got a slightly blousy bodice and then it pulls in around the waist and it's got these, as you can see, it's got these quite sort of um, wide leg trousers that are quite nice and loose and perfect for summer and also make great shorts. So this, um, this fabric I used for my first version of the Zadie jumpsuit. And actually, I remember reading online about fitting the Zadie jumpsuit and a lot of people had had a bit of trouble getting the right fit on them. So I was a bit nervous about giving it a go. But for some reason, I decided to take a risk and cut straight into this fabric. And actually, the fit turned out really well on me. I think the Zadie's designed with a fairly long bodice in mind and I have quite a long torso, so it seemed to work well on me. And it sits just right at the waistline where my waistline is. But I think this fabric pairs really well as a play suit for summer. It feels really cute to wear and it's lovely and lightweight. And you can see at the front here this lovely bias binding detail that goes all around the edge. And then you kind of attach it with the waist tie attached too. See, I really love wearing this one. I think it's such a pretty floral fabric. And yeah, it just does make me think of a painting. And I always think that's really nice when a fabric almost feels artistic. Um, and I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on. I really love my Zadie jumpsuit and I'm glad it turned out okay on the fitting because I'd be really disappointed if I've cut into this lovely fabric and it hadn't turned out right. <laughs> so my next favourite fabric that I've got to share with you is a gingham fabric and I do love a gingham and um, probably just as much as I love a floral and I love a gingham fabric because I really love the sort of clean lines of the check and I think it's a lot of fun to play with as a fabric because you can sort of change the direction so you can have it just a sort of straight horizontal and vertical check or you can change it to make it sort of diagonal and it can really add a lovely touch to a handmade garment I think when you do have fun with a gingham. I know gingham can be a bit of a faff to cut out because you have to sort of think about all the sort of check matching so cutting out on gingham it can be quite time consuming but I do think it's worth it. And my favourite gingham fabric that I've stayed with to date is this one here. And I chose it because it's just such a classic gingham and I love a navy. So it's a navy and white check gingham. I think it's about a one centimetre wide gingham, which is quite a nice size, I think. And as you can see on this garment, I have had fun with the direction of the gingham. I've got some going vertically and horizontally and some going in a diamond shape. And I think it really makes the features of this garment stand out. And this is a yarn dyed gingham that I got from Somi Sunshine. And I'm not sure if they've got the exact same one in stock, but I know they do have a really lovely gingham range, which I'll link down below. It's just a nice cotton, probably sort of the weight of a cotton poplin or maybe just slightly lighter weight than a cotton poplin. So perfect for this garment, which I made using this pattern here, which is the Calais shirt and shirt dress pattern by Closet Core Patterns. It's a really nice shirt and shirt dress pattern with loads of different options built in. You can make sort of a crop version or a tunic length version or a dress length version with different style plackets, like a full button down placket or a popover placket or a concealed button placket. And it's got different sort of pleats you can add to the back, like a box pleat or a V pleat with a yoke, different colours, a standard band collar or a sort of full collar. So it's a really fun pattern that you can have a lot of fun playing around with. And the version I made in this lovely navy gingham fabric is the tunic length ver version. And you can see at the bottom here, I love the hem too. It's finished with bias binding in the same fabric, which comes out as a little diamond. Another pretty feature of a gingham that makes really cute bias binding. And I went for the version with the full collar and the popover placket and it's got a little pocket here that I pattern matched on you can't see that much until I hold it up there we are and again I had fun with the cuffs I added them on in a diamond shape and I just really enjoyed making this garment with all those different ginghams going different ways and I really enjoy wearing it too I find it really nice and relaxed to wear the calais is a bit oversized so it's a really lovely chilled out one to wear and I often pair it with a pair of leggings and a pair of sandals and it's a nice one for a summer's day that is not too warm but I'll put a picture up of me wearing it 
I just really like a gingham and I really find this navy colour nice. I often think if I go, if I went for like a lighter blue gingham, it will remind me of my school uniform when I'm younger, but I think this navy gingham is not too school uniformy. So yeah, it's one I really enjoy to wear. So moving on to my next favourite fabric. Well, I was thinking so far in this video, I've mainly shared fabrics that I've used to turn into more summery garments and they've all been woven fabrics too. But the next fabric is a jersey fabric and I use it to turn it into a more wintry garment. And it's one of the older fabrics I'm sharing in this video. And it's also, I think, probably the most out there print. <laughs> and it's this fabric here. So it's a lovely cotton jersey fabric with this really nice leopard print on. And the base of the fabric, as you can see, is rainbow striped in all the colours of the rainbow. So you've got greens, yellows, oranges, pinks and purples. Everything is in there. And I remember when I bought this fabric, and it was quite a long time ago, I did think, is it going to be too bright for me? Am I actually going to wear it? But I just loved it. And actually, I really enjoy wearing it. And whenever I open my drawer and see it in there, it makes me smile. And I really enjoy just pairing it with a pair of simple jeans. And it really sort of jazzes up a simple outfit. So yeah, I do really love this one, um, even if it is a bit on the bright side and probably more bright than I would usually go for. And you might be able to recognise the pattern I used to start with this fabric. It's one of my favourite jersey top patterns and it's from this book here, which is the Tilly and the Buttons stretch book and it is the Freya top. And it's quite a nice, simple jersey top, a really simple, easy sew that comes together really quickly. Um, it's a top here with this sort of mock turtleneck neckline. That's my favourite top um, neckline version for this pattern, although there are a couple of other versions too, like a cowl neck and a sort of roll neck. And it's quite close fitting and you can either make it as a long sleeve top or a crop sleeve top. And I usually go for the long sleeve top because I think it works really well like that for winter. So I'll put a picture up of me wearing this one. I made it in size two, I think, which is my standard Tilly size. It just fits really nicely. It's fun to wear. I love this print. Um, so yeah, it's one I'm going to hopefully be wearing for years to come. Luckily, it seems to be washing well and it hasn't um, you know, faded too much. So I can really enjoy the full brightness still when I wear this one. My next favourite fabric is another leopard print fabric. I do love a leopard print and I've got a fair few in my wardrobe. And this one's quite different to the last one. It is a lightweight viscose fabric and this is it here. And I really love the colours in this fabric. I remember when I saw it online, um, I really loved it and I resisted buying it for quite a while and I eventually couldn't resist any longer and just snapped it up. And I'm really glad I did snap it up before it all sold out because I don't think this one's available anymore. It's a really lovely viscose fabric, lovely and lightweight and swishy. I think I got it from Fabric Godmother from memory. They do have some lovely viscose fabrics on there. It's got this lovely mustard base and it's got this leopard print on with black and with this lovely hot pink. I love that hot pink pop on the colour. I think it's just so pretty. And I knew I wanted to make something summery like a dress out of this fabric. But I think at the time, for some reason, I'd only bought 1.5 metres. So I had to really squeeze a dress out of it. And the dress I decided to make in the end was using this pattern here, which is a really lovely woven dress pattern. It's the Hinterland dress by So Liberated. I'll show you the line drawings for it. It's a basically a quite a loose fitting dress with a gathered skirt and a button down front. You can either just add the buttons on the bodice or all the way down the front. And it's got different sleeve options, a short sleeve or a sleeveless or a slightly longer sleeve. And it's got really nice finishing to it and it's a really enjoyable pattern to sew. I really like the instructions in this pattern and find it comes together really nicely. So as you can see from my version here, I decided not to add a button placket down the front because I thought this was such a fun print. I really wanted it to be the star of the show and I wanted to keep the dress quite simple. So what I did was I basically cut the front bodice on the fold and didn't add the button placket, which is quite a simple adjustment to make on the pattern. And then I added in some little straps and the Hinterland pattern does come with straps added, but they're more chunky straps. And I decided to add these more spaghetti style straps because I thought it suited the lightweight viscose fabric. I've gone for the short sleeve version. The Hinterland dress is finished with bias binding, so I just use bias binding all the way around the neckline. I think that's a really nice finish that I made in the same fabric. And I just cut it to just above the knee. It's a really nice um, breezy dress to wear for summer. I'll put a picture up of me wearing it. I just really enjoy this print. Um, I think it just makes quite a fun sundress, really. So the next favourite fabric that I've got to share is another one that I use to turn into a summery dress. But it's a bit of a funny story behind this fabric and it's quite a surprise to myself that it made it to my top 10 because it's not one I chose myself. It's one I actually ended up winning in a competition on Instagram. So I was really lucky to win it actually because I wouldn't have necessarily picked it myself but I really love it now and I'm so glad that I have had the opportunity to turn it into a lovely dress for summer. And it's this really beautiful viscose fabric and this fabric is by Atelier Dupe 
I don't think this particular print is in stock by Atelier Dupe anymore, but they do make the most beautiful and um, printed viscose fabrics. The colours are always really rich and vibrant and the designs are so lovely and often sort of large scale floors like this, which is so pretty. So you can see this one's got this quite deep green base and it's got these sort of turquoise and green leafy plants with these lovely little coal accents too, which I think add a real nice pop of colour. So it's a really beautiful fabric. And I actually won this in an Instagram com competition that was run by a lady called Mel, who is Stitch Make Bake, and I'll link her Instagram ac account down below. And she'd made up a different dress in this fabric. And she um, said, if you want to enter the competition, basically add a comment on the post to say what you would make in this fabric. And I commented to say, I would like to make this um, dress here, which is a Charlie Kaftan by Closet Core Patterns. And then I was lucky enough to win this fabric and I did go on to make this dress. So it ended up working out really well, actually. And I'm really pleased with my final dress. So yeah, I'll show you the details of the Charlie Kaftan pattern. It's a really lovely loose fitting dress that I think is perfect for summer because it's really breezy to wear, but it covers you up a little bit from the sun too. You can either make a shorter version or a full length sort of maxi version. It's got this lovely little sort of feature of this little bar um, at the centre front and you can either add gathering underneath that or sort of these architectural pleats. Then it's got this V-neck neckline. You can add waist ties to cinch it in a little bit if you want, a sort of empire line. And it's got two different sleeve opening options, um, a slightly more open, looser sleeve or a slightly smaller sleeve if you want a bit more bra sort of coverage at the sides there. So it's a really nice sew. It is a bit fiddly to sew, particularly adding that little bar at the front, but if you get it right, the finish is really nice and it comes together really well. And I think it works really well in a lovely swishy viscose fabric like this one. So this is my version. As you can see, it's got the bar in the front and I've inserted this um, little waist ties into the bar, so that kind of pulls it in at the side slightly and gives it a bit of shaping. Then I've gone for the looser sleeve option because I love how breezy that is for a hot summer's day. And I think I won two metres of fabric, which gave me just enough to make this sort of above the knee length version, which is the length I really like to wear. So yeah, this is my Charlie Kaftan, this really beautiful Atelier Dupe viscose fabric. And the only reason that I wouldn't have probably gone for this fabric myself is that I don't generally tend to pick green fabrics. It's just not a colour I'm generally drawn to. But since I won this fabric, I've really come round to the idea of green and I love wearing this one. It's one, I think it's one of the fabrics I get complimented on the most when I wear out of all the fabrics I've sewn with. So I really love the green colour, so I'm really glad I won it because it's turned into a fabric that I loved a lot more than I thought I would and have gone on to buy a couple more green fabrics since because this garment has sort of converted me. So yeah, I'm really pleased I won this fabric. It's definitely turned into one of my favourite fabrics. It's lovely quality viscose and it's really lovely to wear. And yeah, I think it makes a perfect match with the Charlie Kaftan pattern too. So my next favourite fabric that I've got to share is the second knit fabric that I've included in my top 10 favourite fabrics. And this is one that when I saw, I just couldn't resist because I loved the print on this one. And it is a Seawit 6 French Terry fabric. And I really love Seawit 6 French Terry fabrics. I think they have such fun prints and they're also really nice quality. They're quite a nice lightweight French Terry. So I think they work perfectly for a nice lightweight sweatshirt. And they just work really well for that. And I've got a couple of sweatshirts in Seawit 6 fabrics that I wear a lot. But the prints I chose to be in my top 10 is this one here. It's this really cute, um, I think it's designed to be a sliced orange on this fabric, but I think it looks more like a lemon because it's quite a yellowy orange colour to it. But I really love the sliced lemon or orange prints on it. And it's on this sort of really pale pink base. And I don't often go for a pale pink, but I really love this colour and I think it works really well, sort of complement the um, orangey yellow colour of the sliced lemon or orange. <laughs> so yeah, I saw this fabric and I just couldn't resist it and I knew I wanted to make a sweatshirt out of it. And I've worn this sweatshirt so much this last winter, it's been yeah, a real staple. And the nice thing about See at Six is they release their fabrics in collections and they also include ribbing that matches the colour of the fabric. So I've used ribbing for the neckband and the um, cuffs and the bottom band of this jumper and it matches just really well and gives such a nice finish I think to have that perfectly matching ribbing. And what I made um, using this fabric, you may well recognise this pattern, it's another one of my real favourites, is this pattern here, which is the Jarra sweatshirt by Megan Nielsen. And it's a really nice oversized relaxed fit sweatshirt with loads of different variations on. You can make kind of a classic sweatshirt with this dropped shoulder and a kind of classic crew neck, which is what I've made out of my lovely lemon print fabric. There's also a version with a dipped hem or a tie front. There are a couple of different sleeve options, this sort of split sleeve option too. And there's also this sort of funnel neck option. So it's a pattern with loads of different ver variations built, built in. And I've made quite a lot of different versions using different variations. And I just love them all. So yeah, it's a really great versatile pattern. 
comfy. I just love this fabric. It's so fun. I always enjoy wearing it. I think it looks great with a pair of blue jeans. I'll put a picture on so you can see what it looks like on. And I think it really suits a, just a relaxed fit sweatshirt and it's really nice and comfy to wear too. So this one I'm sure is one I'm going to be wearing for years to come and really enjoying this really funky print. <laughs> Oh, and I forgot to mention that French Terry fabric came from Lamarzi Fabrics and I don't think that particular print's in stock anymore but See You at Six do regularly release new collections that always include a couple of lovely French Terry prints so I'll link their latest collection down below. So my next favourite fabric is another one that I purchased from Lamarzi Fabrics and this one is a Rifle Paper Co fabric. And I think I had to have a Rifle Paper Co fabric as one of my top 10 favourites because I think they're such lovely fabrics. They're so nice quality, really enjoyable to sew with and to wear. And I just love their prints. They're so pretty and so intricate. I just think they're really beautiful. Each one feels like a piece of art. They're so nice. So it's quite hard to choose my favourite Rifle Paper Co print because I have made a couple of garments out of their fabrics. But in the end, I chose this print because it's the one I think I've worn the most and I always really enjoy wearing this one. I find it works with so many things. It's a really great versatile fabric. And it's this lovely fabric here. This is a cotton fabric and I think it's kind of like a quilting weight cotton. It's quite substantial. And it's got this really beautiful print on with lots of different wild flowers. And I think they're all so lovely if you look at all the detail on them. They're all really different. So it's a black base with these really pretty blues and greens and reds and yellows. And I just think it's such a pretty, delicate print. This comes in two colourways, um, the black base colourway and also a navy sort of blue base colourway too. And I think they're both in stock at La Marzi still, and if they are, I'll link them down below. But yeah, I really love this fabric, and I bought it to make this garment here, which is another hack of this pattern here, the Ogden Cami pattern. But whereas I'm wearing quite a summery hack, this is more one I made for winter or slightly cooler weather. So for this version, I made some more of a pinafore that I can layer. I think I sized up one size on this version compared to what I'd made my this summary version in. And I cropped off a little bit shorter to more of an empire line. And then I added on a gathered waist skirt, a gathered skirt with pockets. And I also widened the strap slightly to give it more of a sort of chunky winter pinafore type look. Um, and I think I raised the back on this one a little bit too. Um, yeah, just because it is quite a deep V on the back, which works quite well for a summer dress. But I thought for winter it might be nice to have a slightly higher back and I cropped it to just above the knee. And I really enjoyed making this hack. And again, as with this summer dress, I've made a blog post, talking, I've written a blog post, talking all about um, the adjustments I made and the hack and how I calculated the skirt and how I made this um, Ogden cami into a pinafore dress that I can layer for winter. So I'll link that blog post down below in case you fancy checking that one out too. But I love wearing this one. It's been even more versatile than I thought it would be. It works really well in winter, sort of layered over a sort of Tilly in the Buttons Freya style top with a sort of high neck to keep me really cosy. But I also think it works really well in warmer weather too. I often wear it with like a white t-shirt underneath and just with bare legs and a pair of trainers. I think that works really nicely too. So yeah, I love this print and I love the garment I've turned it into. And I'm really pleased that I'm getting a lot of wear out of it because the Rifle Paper Co fabrics are on the more expensive end. So it's really nice to know I'm getting loads of wear out of this one. I'm really enjoying this very pretty print. So that brings me on to my final favourite fabric and I think this fabric was the easiest choice out of all the fabrics in my top 10 because I've actually sewn with it three times. I've used three different colourways of it to make three different garments so that's how much I love this fabric and I'll share the first colourway and the first garment I made and this is the fabric here. You may recognise it as the Atelier Brunette double gauze fabric. I think it's called Stardust. It's got all these little metallic spots on which are so pretty. And it's quite unusual for double gauze, I think, because it's got quite a flat feel to it. It's not got that crinkly feel that double gauze often has. But I really love it. And yeah, I've made three garments in three different colourways. And this is the first garment I made in this fabric. And I just find it such a comfy fabric to wear. I love double gauze. It's so nice and soft um, and breathable. I just find it a really lovely fabric to wear. And this fabric is so nice to sew with too. So yeah, this is the first thing I made in Atelier Brunette Stardust Double Gauze. And this is the Fringe Dress by Chalk and Notch. And I'll show you the pattern because I think sometimes black is quite hard to show and pick up all the details on the screen. But here is the Fringe Dress pattern. It's a really nice pattern, one I really enjoy sewing. I love the instructions to this one. I find them really, um, it really comes together really nicely, this dress. So it's basically a dress with a gathered skirt that's got this dip or this curved hem. It's got a v-neck and a button-down bodice. It's designed to be fairly loose fit. And then you can either make it um, yeah, with a button down bodice or this sort of notched front bodice, but I've always gone for this version with the buttons. And it's got this cute little sort of gathered up 
um, sleeve cuff that you secure with little um, sort of notch at the top, which is quite pretty, or a little tab, I think they call it, at the top, which is a really nice detail. Um, or you can add on just sort of classic, simple sleeve cuffs. And it's got darts, so it gives a bit of shaping on the bodice too. And it just comes together really nice. I think it's a really cute, relaxed style day dress. So yeah, this is my version here. As I said, I went for the version with the buttons down the front. So I've got three buttons there, which you can hopefully see. And I've got the little sleeve tab here to sort of bring in the sleeves, which I think is a really nice feature. And I don't think I made any adjustments. I often do lengthen the bodice on patterns because I've got quite a long torso, but I don't think I did on this one. And I quite like the sort of empire style waist. I think it's quite pretty and goes well on this dress. And you can see at the bottom, it's got this sort of dipped, I'll hold it up high enough. It's got this dipped hem at the bottom too, which is a nice feature as well. So I love my fringe dress in Atelier Brunette Double Wars. I always enjoy getting this one out and I'll put up a picture so you can see what that one looks like on me. So that's the first garment I made and I think this is a night colourway um, of the Atelier Brunette Double Gauze. I then went on to use the Amarante colourway. I'm not sure if that's how you say it, but it's a lovely deep red colour. This colourway here, which again has these little cute little metallic dots on. This is my second um, garment I made and I made another dress and this time I made this dress here which is the Maya Sotis dress by Deer and Doe, which is another shirt dress, but quite a different style to the fringe dress. This one has this sort of, um, again, a V with this band collar, button down front and darts. And you can either make it as a short sleeve or these sort of extra sort of ruffle or flounce on the sleeve. And then you can either make a plain um, gathered skirt with a straight bottom, or you can add a ruffle to that too. And it's designed to be quite oversized and quite relaxed. And although for my version, I sized down, added waist ties to cinch in and give it a bit more of a fitted look. So this is my version here and you can see I added these sort of skinny waist ties to bring it in and it's got these lovely darts which give a really nice shape to the bodice and I actually bought matching Atelier brunette buttons for this one because I thought it would be really hard to match this colour otherwise I'm um, using sort of non Atelier brunette buttons so that was a little bit of an extra treat to get those matching buttons and I went for the short sleeve version but I added the ruffle on the bottom and I really enjoy wearing this dress it's a really pretty one and I think it works all year round, I often sort of layer it up with a nice cardi and tights in winter and I actually wore it on Christmas Day this year because it's so comfy to wear. The double gauze is really breathable so it kind of kept me cool in the kitchen when I was cooking but it was also quite nice and cosy um, when it was cooler on Christmas Day. So yeah, that was my Christmas Day dress this last year but I love wearing it in the summer too and I'll put a picture up of me wearing that one as well. So the final garment I've made using this lovely Atelier Brunette double gauze fabric is a top and for this top I use the off-white colourway and I'll show you it here. So it's a really pretty creamy colour and on this one the metallic spots have a sort of goldy tone to them whereas for the black and the amaranto colourways the spots are a little bit more silvery but I think the gold works really well with the sort of warm kind of cream tone to this off-white colour. And this top is actually a hack of the fringe dress pattern that I used for the black colourway of this fabric. And for this hack, I turned it into a top by adding on a little sort of um, skirt to the top. But instead of making a gathered skirt, I sort of removed the gathers just to make it a sort of straight skirt. Because I like the idea of having a top at the fringe dress. But I thought the top version you can make per the pattern as gathering. And I thought it might end up being a bit too much and end up wearing me. So I adapted the pattern piece and turned it into a little top. And it's still got the dipped hem at the bottom. But it's just got a bit more of a simple look to it without the gathering. And I've still got on these gathered little sleeves with the sleeve tabs, which I really like. And I really like this top actually, and it's a lot of fun to wear, and I really, yeah, enjoy wearing it. It's nice and comfy with the double gauze fabric too. And I actually wrote a blog post again for this one, sharing how I did this hack, so I'll link that blog post as well, in case you fancy taking a look. So yeah, that's my final make, um, using this beautiful Atelier Brunette fabric, and I love those three garments, and I really enjoy wearing all three. And I've had a look online, and I think Minerva stock all of the colourways of this Atelier Brunette Stardust Double Gauze fabric. I think there are eight colours in total, as well as the three I've sewn with. There's also a really pretty sort of deep forest green colour, and a blush pink. I think there's a chestnut, and maybe a deep navy blue, and a mustard. So yeah, they're all really pretty colours. Very tempting, but I think I'm going to stick at my three garments for now, because there's probably plenty of garments in the same fabric in different colourways. So those are my 10 favourite fabrics that I've sewn up into garments for my handmade wardrobe. And I've really enjoyed picking those fabrics out and sharing them with you and talking about what I've turned them into. So I hope you've enjoyed hearing about it too. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it was really hard to narrow it down to just 10 top fabrics. So I think I might do another one of these videos at some point in the future with some more of my favourites in there that I feel a bit bad having left out of this video. <laughs> so thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, I'd love it if you would give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, then thank you for dropping by. If you would consider subscribing, that would be amazing. And if you press the bell icon too, that means you'll be notified when my future videos come out. So 
So thank you again for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you again soon. Bye.